All right. So we are going to go ahead, guys, and talk about Indian leadership again as you go through. Fill or as we go through, fill in your information on your uh, on your document. All right. So let's take a look, guys. Going from Nehru all the way up to the present prime minister today. So what are we going to be looking at, guys? Um, we've already kind of looked a little bit at the uh, influ influence that Gandhi has had, and you're going to continue to do that with the activity for today. Um, and then we're going to also take a look at kind of motives and results of what we call non-alignment. Everything you're going to see in this time frame that we're in is going to be countries are going to be aligned with either the United States or the Soviet Union because we look at communism versus democracy. While India is the world's largest democracy, but they don't align with either of these countries. They don't align with the Soviets and they don't align with the United States. They, they go about things as they call non-aligned. They don't want to be part of either of those sides because they're a brand new country. They want to make their own way. All right. And that was one of the policies that we get to with our, uh, our original, our very first prime minister that we have here, guys. So again, fill in your info as we go. Uh, but when we look at Nehru, Prime Minister Nehru, um, he was a member of the Congress Party and he was uh, the first prime minister of India. He came into office in 1948 and he held office all the way till 1964. So that's a long time. Um, as, we, as we look at prime ministers here, um, he had some goals. His goal, number one goal is to unite India. He had come into um, a time here, again, when we had a lot of uh, influx, we had a lot of issues between Muslims and Hindu, and we also have Sikh that are in there. And, and all three of those religions really had a very difficult time. He tried to separate religion from government altogether if he could. The problem is it was pretty well ingrained in their society and their culture at that point. And so it became very difficult. All right. Uh, more individual. He also wanted to give more individual rights to people. Again, keep in mind this is the uh, society, the culture that we're talking about. The the caste system, right? Where at the bottom you've got the untouchables, people that literally don't have any rights in their society. He tried to work to outlaw the idea of the caste system and bring in more individual rights for people. And again, he also went with the non-alignment um, idea. The idea that he didn't want to be an ally of the United States. He didn't want to be an ally of the Soviet Union because they were a young country. They had to make their own way without help or without interference from either of those other countries. All right. Now, if you look at what are some of the problems and issues that he faced, um, trying to carve out a role in the world for India. What role is India going to play in the world at this point? Right. was a big one, especially as a brand new country. Um, how are they going to handle the economy? Right. Uh, they, they are capitalists. All right. They handled it uh, by following that road. But they again, what what do they do? What do they what, what kind of economic issues do we still see there? Right. Is, is part of the problems. Um, relations with some of their neighbors, relationships between uh, India and Pakistan have always been tense. And it's largely because of the the what we just saw in the video clip there, the fact that they basically carved up two different regions that really probably should have had their own their own country. All right. Kashmir and Punjab. Uh, Punjab, I should say, excuse me. And those two, those two regions um, got carved up. Part of them are in Pakistan, part of them are in India. And that's created problems, right? They still have problems with that today. And then again, Kashmir, we just mentioned that one, right? That's a, that's a big issue. Now he actually dies in office. He dies in 1964. Um, but again, he was a very good prime minister. He did a good job of working to further, um, further India this time during this tumultuous beginning that they had, right? Now, eventually, Indira Gandhi ends up taking over a couple years after her father actually dies. So her father is Nehru. She is not related to uh, Mohandas Gandhi at all. There is no, uh, no relation there. Uh, but she takes over for her father a couple years after his death. All right? So someone else is, was in there in the meanwhile. But um, her, her father is Nehru, and she is also a member of the Congress Party, and she is in office from 1964 to 1984 although she's voted out in there during a time period as well. And her goals essentially were to continue and make sure she could carry out her father's goals, all right, which was, again, uniting India and those ideas. Um, her, her being in power angered a lot of Indian people at the time. And eventually um, they voted her out of office in 1977, all right. In, uh, in 1980, then they reelected her as prime minister again. So, you know, they didn't necessarily know what they were missing, I guess, until they, they had lost her. And so they, they vote her back in in 1980. And she had a lot of issues and problems that she faced as well. Cultural changes, um, the changing role of, uh, of gender roles in, in uh, the culture, right? Specifically in India culture, we talk about, again, that caste system. She, she helps to outlaw the caste system as well. 
Um, but we see massive urbanization, people leaving um, the countrysides, coming into the cities. Um, and again, more problems with that. Also, overpopulation starts to become a problem at this point already. Um, so that becomes an issue. And if you remember back to last year in human geography, we talked about under, under Indira Gandhi, this is the time where we start to get into um, trying to stop that overpopulation by setting up sterilization uh, places where basically if someone committed a crime, they would be sterilized if it was a man. They would no longer be able to have kids. All right, so doing things like that was, was, uh, was what happened under her. So again, not always the most popular, popular, but not always the most popular were some of the things that she tried to do here with the, the issues and problems. Uh, again, Pakistan and Kashmir remain an issue. That region has been uh, unstable for a long time. That's the kind of the northeast, or excuse me, northwest portion of India. And then Sikhism and the idea of uh, separatism between Hindus and Sikhs became bigger and bigger. This idea that they, they just could not get along. Now, eventually, um, she is assassinated in 1984. She's actually assassinated by someone who was Sikh. Um, and he, was, uh, he had kind of uh, gone undercover as her bodyguard and eventually does assassinate her. Um, and it's because of the, the issues, the religious problems that they had, the Sikh, Sikhs had with, uh, with Indira Gandhi at the time. All right, so she is assassinated in 1984. Um, Rajiv Gandhi, who is her son, ends up taking over the prime minister after that. So again, keep in mind, he's being, these people are being elected. It's not like there, there's a line of secession, but they are, he is elected. Um, he's a member of the Congress party. He's elected in 1984, and uh, he becomes a very popular leader while he's in power. Um, his party actually loses power after a while, um, but he continues to, uh, to, to work towards solving some of these problems that his grandfather had and that his mother had, um, working on trying to fix the economic issues in India, uh, working um, to deal with the issues of Pakistan and Kashmir, which, again, still remains a problem. And he also faces issues with religious uh, and, and cultural separatism, uh, a group of people called the Tamils, uh, who are, are kind of in the southern portion of India. Um, we're, we're very much against kind of the Hindu culture and the, and the culture of, of uh, some of the other people here in India at this time. So, again, separatism is, is an issue. Trying to reunite the country was difficult. Unfortunately, just like his mother, he was assassinated in 1991. All right. So you can kind of see that the, this, the, this family is very similar to, uh, if we were to say, like the, uh, the Kennedy family in the United States. Very, very active in politics um, and, and held very high offices, but have been assassinated. Multiple members have been assassinated. So, so he, too, was assassinated in 1991. All right. Uh, if we take a look at some of the others, guys, uh, we can look at... Uh, the other prime ministers that we've had since then. So we've had just, we had just a few basically from 1948 all the way up to 1991. And now we've gone through quite a few more you can see over this time period. Um, and again, they face uh, similar problems, right? Uh, what kind of economy is India going to have today, right? How are they going to handle kind of this idea of new nationalism, bringing the country back together, uniting the people? Pakistan and Kashmir are still problems. Uh, Hindu and Sikh relations are still problems. And today, maybe one of the biggest problems they have is still nuclear war. Um, and that's because, here's our last one, it's all the same problems here. Um, that's because India and Pakistan are both nuclear powers. And we know that at any moment, those two countries, they just, they don't seem to get along. And we know that they could go to war. In fact, they, they are two countries that they, they obtained nuclear weapons um, after the nuclear pro proliferation bill was signed, uh, which means they are, they are not governed by any act or any bill or anything. They could, they could do whatever they wanted, essentially. All right. Now, we, we know that they probably won't. But the fact that they have a border dispute going on and both have nuclear weapons is alarming to most people, I think. All right. Kind of leads to issues. All right. Modi is our current prime minister in India today. And again, like we said, he faces a lot of the same problems that they faced back in 1948. Right. Not a whole lot has changed. Overpopulation, obviously, being maybe the biggest one today, but uh, that, that's still a big one. And so the big question is, uh, what's next? Right. What is next for uh, for India? Um, we know population and overpopulation continues to be a problem. We know that uh, making sure we have enough food for that many people is a, a problem. Foreign relations could be a big issue moving forward. Um and we know that uh, they have started to um, modernize. They've started to industrialize much faster. 
and they've really kind of made their way into hopefully um, the next jump, which would be kind of becoming a more developed country. Right. And we don't know when it comes to politics. Um, Sonia Gandhi is actually um, Rajiv Gandhi's um, widow. Um, her sons are involved in politics as well. So is it possible we'll see another Gandhi? Uh, and this, again, they're not related to Mohandas Gandhi, but is it possible we'll see another one of these um, Gandhi children um, become prime minister? And, and it's very possible. All right. Very possible moving forward. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's, uh, that's where we end it for today. So keep in mind, um, real quick, guys, if you go back to um, your other assignment here, oops, I clicked the wrong one, right there, this is what you should be working on here for your remaining time. You got about 20, 30 minutes here, guys. Shouldn't take you more than that. You just need to open up the documents. Again, Chapter 29, Section 1, Chapter 32, Section 1, and I've given you those right here, right at the top. And then there's some articles there that I've given you as well. They're already highlighted. You just need to kind of read through them and find the highlights uh, on, and figure out where they go. Again, if it is green, it will go under Gandhi's side of the Venn diagram. If it's red, it goes in both of them. And if it's yellow, it will be involved with Muhammad Ali Jinnah, our two kind of independence fighters here for India and Pakistan. All right. Again, they, as you can see with the picture, they work together. They work together to bring about independence for India as a whole. And then it was divided up. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions um, right now or as you're working on this, feel free to message me, guys, and we, I can help you out. Otherwise, finish this up in the next few minutes here, and we will see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. You too.